Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. They thought they'd get away with it until now. This is Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring retired FBI Special Agent Jennifer Coffin-Daffer. We know that uh, Diddy right now is uh, in a fairly, you know, sectioned off part of uh, of the jail there in New York City. Sam Bankman fried supposedly uh, one of his uh, cellmates at this point in time. Um, what do you think life is like there for him uh, at that uh, that jail in New York? I know it doesn't have the best reputation for being you know, a cush jail by any stretch of the imagination. How do you think he's holding up and what sort of uh, precautions are they putting in place to prevent another Epstein type situation uh, or, or something else where maybe another prisoner uh, is deciding that they're going to make themselves famous by taking out Diddy? Yeah, I, this is such a great question. First of all, I want to just describe these these cells that they're yeah. in. I don't know the exact dimensions of his, but typically they're about nine by 12 feet. I mean, they're very small. Picture bunk on top of bunk, sort of, where you can barely sit up. Mm -hmm. uh, picture these um, mattresses that are, you know, mattresses is loose termed, right? Um, very thin, uh, typically uh, very difficult to sleep on. Uh, a, a toilet, if you will, that is silver and, and very cold, uh, very uncomfortable. Um, again, a sink uh, that would be, uh, <laughs> again, very small. And just the, the entirety of the situation is just claustrophobic. I've been in these cells. It's it's really uh, a small, especially because you're sharing it with another. He's confined for 23 hours a day. Uh, just imagine yourself in that setting for 23 hours a day. It's a lot. Um, also, they are going to have to make sure that uh, there's no way for him to Commit suicide under these conditions because he's going from a lap of billionaire luxury planes, you know, silk sheets, et cetera, to this kind of confinement is very mentally tough. Uh, the type of food he's eating is is really the lowest caliber, uh, very starchy. That's why you see so many individuals that are incarcerated they just balloon up in their rate in their weight because it's it's a very starchy diet obviously these diets aren't going to involve you know uh grade a t-bone steaks and and choice chicken so uh you know people balloon up in their weight uh some people refuse to eat as as diddy has done at least to some degree he has to be eating but at least to some degree um, he obviously has a commissary fund, but again, uh, he's concerned about being poisoned or somebody mm -hmm. slipping that across. Who wouldn't want to be famous that are already in a criminal stature of facing charges to be the one that could be said, you know, I off Diddy. Mm -hmm. And that's what law enforcement is concerned about. Those people that want to make a name for themselves. And let's talk about that because uh, yeah, I was hearing the stories that he wasn't eating uh, the food that was being given to him. And yeah, there's a commissary fund. I, I, I've never been in jail. I've never been in prison. So I don't know the answers to these questions. And I know you haven't either, but, but I guess, uh, you know, more the the, log the logistics than I do. It, it is, it, he has a lot of money. So is his commissary fun like he could pretty much buy the commissary if he wanted to? Or or do they limit like how much can be in a commissary fund at any given time to prevent something like that from happening with someone like this uh, that has been arrested and is in custody? They're limited. They're limited for a lot of reasons. You can imagine the um, bargaining tool or chip you would have if, say, you did own the commissary. All of a sudden, you'd become the commissary and you would have so much control over these, you know, the inmates that you're incarcerated with. So there's definite limits that are put in place uh, to keep everything fair. 
um, and, you know, a very limited choice. Although I, I think it's broader, certainly in certain jails. I don't know his. I actually did read a little bit about his options. And, and I think the commissary is pretty broad there in New York, much broader than people might think. In other words, it's not just, you know, uh, sweet tart, pop tarts and, and, you know, butterfingers. I think there's much more than that to choose from. Um, but nevertheless, there's somebody that, you know, people are around the commissary. And I think he's worried about somebody planting a, a poisonous uh, something that could be disseminated uh, to him. Mm-hmm. And and I think he has great reason for concern. Uh, if I were Diddy, I would feel the exact same way. Um, certainly they're going to be keeping a close watch on him, a suicide watch, not because there's any belief that he's going to commit suicide, but they just can't have that on their hands as far as an institution. Well, it happened to Epstein, <laughs> but so I, I wouldn't be that shocked if it happens to Diddy, uh, as well it happens, meaning maybe he does not the one behind it. Uh, but the, the, the question I would have here is, do you think he's capable of, of, ending his own life. I mean, it's rare for a narcissist to to do that, especially as a grandiose one like he is, uh, and to the level that he is. But there is such a thing as narcissistic collapse, and that's basically where the walls have completely closed in on you, which is truly what's happening here. Uh, and, and they just realize there's no way out. There's no way out anymore. And with 120 new allegations, many from minors, if he has any semblance of... of understanding that this stuff is real and assuming he did these things or participated and was aware that he participated in these sort of things. He's got to know this is the end of the road. Well, you know, it's interesting. I think that individuals um, who uh, decide to take their life they're they're not thinking clearly at all. They're not thinking about anything else other than the fact that, uh, you know, they're desperate and they have no hope and the pain that they're suffering. They see no other way to end that pain other than to end their lives. Uh, I think generally speaking on, on that topic. So really anyone, uh, is, is capable that would be in these horrible conditions that he's in, especially when you consider where he came from. But, but did he, Diddy's a tough cookie, I think, too. Uh, he's been in the thug life. Uh, that is no secret. And so um, he's he's probably a tougher nut uh, than a Epstein. Yeah, I, I, I would think so. Uh, it, it's just there's a lot of people out there, uh, as we're learning more and more about these allegations, we don't have any names as of this recording yet, uh, but there's going to be a lot of people out there with a very large vested interest in information about them being at Diddy parties, not getting out. Uh, and just like in the Epstein case, that that exact same principle, I think, was very much in place of that information not getting out. And we all know what happened there. Not trying to be gruesome or dark or anything, but uh, this just really seems so overwhelming. I mean, how do you even attempt to take up this many cases and there's going to be many more too. I mean, logistically, how do you even handle something like this? Well, I remember us talking about this uh, at the very beginning when these allegations were first starting to arise after the search warrants. And, you know, I think anybody who is aware of all the facts and details understands there's going to be more people. Uh, But as an agent, uh, as the case agent that's handling this matter, uh, obviously DHS is going to have multiple, multiple agents assigned to this particular case. And they are all going to divide up this work, specifically the interviews that are going to have to take place concerning these new allegations. And and it's just uh, going to be a daily grind. And and something that they're going to be, I think, working pretty expeditiously at. Uh, the reason is, is you never know what's going to happen in terms of this trial. Uh, it will speedy trial be waived. I don't think it's waived right now. So they're on the hurry right now uh, to gather all the information that exists against Diddy. Do you think it's going to be a, a trial that happens fairly soon? Is that in the interest of Diddy to try and get that going? Uh, just so they can't just sit here and wait and more uh, will accumulate. I mean, obviously more will continue to accumulate, which will just 
turn end up in another trial at some point. Um, but what is in Diddy's best interest right now? Is it to, to get this into court as quickly as possible? I think his best interest is to make sure all of the information is understood and to put it off as long as possible. He's in a much better situation in a jail as opposed to a prison. Uh, once he, if he is convicted, he's going to be in a prison. That's so difficult to uh, see people, to have visitation. It's much if you can believe it, even more stark of a situation than he's in right now, much fewer freedoms. And so uh, to be jailed as opposed to be in a prison is is better. Um, the other thing is, you know, he has a very astute attorneys and they are going to be working hard to try to get some of this thrown out. Um, they're going to be looking at um you know, discrediting all of these witnesses and they're going to fight hard for them. So I think it's best not to go, not to waive speedy trial, or sorry, to waive speedy trial and to have his attorneys fight. Strap in and get ready to go back in time. Gen X Time Machine is here to transport you back to the glorious days of neon, big hair, and cassette tapes that always needed rewinding. To figure out where Tupperware like, went wrong, we kind of got to start at the beginning. Remember when MTV actually played music videos? Or when lunch wasn't complete without Dunkaroos? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit like trying to recapture the magic of a bygone era. Yeah. We're diving into all that and more. So if you want to relive the 80s and 90s in all their retro glory, hit up Gen X Time Machine wherever you get your podcasts. VHS is looking like the obvious winner, right? Oh, and don't forget the rise of the video rental store, remember? Subscribe, because who doesn't need another excuse to avoid adulting? You're welcome. The Gen X Time Machine.